We all know the sorcerer is the best class. How do you feel about using your ultimate ability every, like, ten seconds? And no, this footage is not sped up. I know what you're thinking, actually, it's like Necro or Barbarian or Druid or Rogue, and look, it's okay to be wrong. In all seriousness, no, all the classes are, of course, awesome in their own right and plenty powerful, but I am very much, well, all in on the Sorcerer, it is what I've always enjoyed in these types of games, I just love the pretty magic going boom, and it doth go boom in a mighty big way in Diablo 4. So today I want to bring you a general overview of how the Sorcerer works, some um, tips and tricks, some um, little more in-depth mechanical things that will really help you get as far as possible on this class before, of course, giving you what is currently the best way to play and build this class for maximum damage that will make you effortlessly wave clear and absolutely melt bosses at the same time without having to have a build for each and it just works beautifully and honestly it feels a little bit too strong. If you don't care about learning about the class in general and all of that, that good stuff, well, I will put a timestamp on screen now. God, I really hope there is actually a timestamp on screen now to take you straight to the build part of this video, but for everyone else, let's do this thing. So, of course, the Sorcerer is, in essence, fairly simple. Three schools of magic, blast things generally from a distance, and have fun doing so while protecting your fairly squishy self from taking too many hits. But, of course, as with every class, there's a lot more going on under the surface. So, what the Sorcerer cares about, or at least the Sorcerer's gimmick that is pushed in the talent tree, is lucky hits. Basically, this is a chance when thing happens, generally a crit, for extra powerful thing to then happen. The easy example is a 15% chance that when you crit, your defensive cooldowns will just be reset completely. So from 20 second cooldown right the way to zero, you can immediately use it again. Which means if you do get this happen once every 10 seconds, Ice Barrier lasts 6 seconds, so you're actually only having 4 seconds of every 10 without Ice Barrier. That's really cool. Though of course you don't have to focus on this. Past that, then, you have the unique ability to put one of your existing abilities into an enchantment slot, which will make a powerful passive, well, happen. As an easy example, our Ice Barrier, well, gives a 5% chance whenever you take damage to just give you an extra Ice Armor. So obviously if you're being swarmed by enemies, this is going to make it appear constantly. It's not necessarily the best one to use, but it is a uh, definite all-round potent one. Or something like Blizzard, that just gives you a 6 second Blizzard every 15 seconds, so for nearly half the time, you're just constantly blizzarding and freezing and damaging just passively for free. Like, that's really potent, and then when we get a second enchantment slot at level 30, well, the fun really doth begin. So, we then have our three chief schools of magic. We have fire, we have ice, and we have lightning. They all tend to play in a certain way or focus on a certain thing, but they certainly interconnect and support one another. But as a pure expression, if you go all in fully on lightning, essentially what you are playing with is critical strike synergy and crackling energy. Crackling energy is various ways and chances for lightning spells to make crackling energy drop on the floor when it damages enemies. These are little balls of lightning that you can run over and pick up. They're represented just above your experience bar and you can get a fair amount of them and while you have them, you'll just pulse damage to enemies around you until you have drained them all. So Lightning all in wants you to constantly generate these, constantly pick them up, and constantly be pulsing damage. Or you can go full all in on crit, as lots of lightning perks and abilities do support crit. And lastly, lightning spells tend to actually stun enemies and work with synergies that involve stunning or attacking stunned enemies too. 
Then we move over to the fire and flames and the fury. This is big damage, but of course it's damage over time. Nearly every fire ability does apply a dot to the enemy. They all stack up together, so you can essentially kill an enemy, air quotes, but they just don't know it yet. You've just applied 10,000 worth of burn to them, and it's slowly catching up with them. There are a few just pure damages, like good old fireball itself, and then of course Hydro, which is currently the probably single strongest spell in the open beta, at least for Sorcerer, it absolutely shreds everything these lovely fiery heads spit at. Fire then very much is amazing at single target. You can just apply a load of burns, then run around and survive while they just die. And it also does work well in groups because there is a lot of area of effect going on here. But again, it's not burst damage. You are going to have to wait for people to die. And finally, fire also is all about immobilizing enemies. So they can't move, they can still do ranged attacks and cast at you, but they are rooted to the spot, and that works quite well too. Basically, all three trees have their way of CC. Lightning with stun, fire with immobilize, and then, of course, now we talk about frost with freezing. Of course, that's the thing that comes to mind when we look at the ice spells, and indeed it is fully encasing the enemies in ice, and while they're in ice, they're just at your mercy. You're going to absolutely destroy them. Them, and a lot of frost synergy comes from attacking enemies that are frozen for massive bonuses such as you know just pure massive bonus damage which is really good frost also brings itself a lot of utility and it's definitely all about making enemies vulnerable too vulnerable enemy is essentially a dead enemy vulnerable is 20% more damage taken to the enemy that is vulnerable and you really do feel that and frost applies it in spades of course it is as I said, mass crowd control with its freezing, good amounts of area damage, but you're probably not going to be busting out frost to kill a boss, as it just isn't as effective against a single big health, immune to lots of CC, really takes a lot of work to fill their stun bar enemy. And frost also brings with it the best defensive utility in both the AoE freeze frost nova, and then more importantly, probably the best non-offensive spell we have access to, which is ice armor, which covers both, you know, not dying and also having lots of mana as it does increase your mana regen while it's up and that's incredibly useful. And it's on that note then that I want to move on to general sorcery stuff. You are going to absolutely burn through mana. Things are expensive. You have a default pool of the 100 mac and that's just two, three casts of a moderately expensive spell. A hydra is 20, a chain lightning is 35, so two chain lightnings and a hydra and now you're waiting for your mana to regen. So that helps shape and define how you actually build because managing that is very important. You can't just put six heavy mana cost big boom abilities on your bars because you'll barely ever cast them. You need to focus on a few abilities that aren't super expensive and fill the rest out with ones that are cooldown based instead of actually having a cost. Which basically means your standard sorcerer will be a normal spammy left click attack, two mana spenders that you focus on, two cooldowns that you use on cooldown, and then one defensive ability. That's kind of what you want to imagine as a default build. Then we have uh, basic operating in fights. You are squishy outside of your ice armor and you want to keep moving. And indeed, if you do your generic left click attack, then move, then left click, then move, then left click, stutter step attacking, not only will you stay on the move, so not taking damage to things that are near you because you'll keep moving away from them, but you will actually attack faster than if you just stood still blasting. It cancels the animation recovery and immediately lets you go into the next attack. So always attack, move, attack, move, attack, move, attack, move with everything that you do and keep that as your general mentality. Past that then, the Sorcerer is just an effective class. It's the most selfish class, it has the least group utility, but what it does do, it does very well, and that is massive damage to massive amounts of enemy very quickly. It is the king of burst. You start with full mana, which means at the start of every fight, you can just spend it all in a blitz and really start chunking the enemy. You don't have to build resources like a lot of the other classes. You also have a big, deep, varied bag of tricks that you could really build for specific situations, 
and that's really awesome too, and you have command of a lot of crowd control CC and very much different damage types. You're not going to be walled by an enemy because of particular resistances or playstyles, because you will have a way to counteract it. The weaknesses, of course, are the fact that you are fairly squishy, but again, there is very many ways to manage that, and you're also a highly mobile class too, with the ability to teleport and get to where you need to be should you take that. So with that all said then, as a general sort of intro to Sorcerer and why it might be for you, and of course, you know, it has really super cool flashy spell animations that feel really fun and you do big damage and you just feel like a god, so if you like that flavor, you know if you like that flavor in your RPGs. So let's talk then about what I believe to be currently the most effective build and indeed playstyle for the Sorcerer, at least as far as level 25 in the beta goes, but I can see this scaling massively well in 2 the full game. So what we are working with is Ice Armor, Hydra, Ice Blades, Deep Freeze, Spark, and Chain Lightning. How this all synergizes then is as follows. We start with Spark being our basic left-click attack. We don't need to put a lot of points into it. It's just there to something to spend and do with our time when we're out of mana and waiting on cooldowns. We want it to be enhanced mainly so that we can get to Glinting Spark as it gives us crit chance as crit is going to be a big engine for what we're doing here. We then move down and we grab Chain Lightning. I would like to have more points into this, but we're stretched thin with the amount we're allowed in the beta, but this is your your big damage mana spender that you're going to use a lot of the time, a lot of bounces, and we have modified it to gain 3% crit chance every time it bounces, so this is going to crit a lot and it's going to hurt a lot, and then we've gone for if it bounces off you, it then gains 25% increased damage, so when it's just you and a boss, it will go boss you, boss you, boss you, and just blow them up, and it's fantastic. Then, our defensive skill of choice is, of course, Ice Armor, it's just too good, basically unkillable while it's on your damage itself fuels it, and then what we want is just the single enhanced to get that 25% mana regen so we can blast off more abilities while in ice armor, and the build is also all around having that ice armor uptime, and it does that incredibly well. So it works really effectively. Of course we grab maximum glass cannon because just pure 18% increased damage is more than worth taking 9% more, and then we want this, elemental attunement, lucky hit, 15% chance for a crit to to completely reset the cooldown of a defensive skill. Our only defensive skill is Ice Armor, so it has a 20 second cooldown and you've got a 15% chance per crit and we are critting constantly thanks to Enhanced Chain Lightning and indeed our Glinting Spark here on top of our natural crit chance, so then this Ice Armor just immediately gets set to zero and we can pop it on again. Yes, it only happens once every 10 seconds, but it's really good and it also feeds into the synergy of our chosen Ice Blades here. So this will float around and attack enemies and then has a good chance to make them vulnerable and take 20% more damage. That's really, really good. But we also have then enhanced ice blades, which means when they do hit a vulnerable enemy, a random cooldown is going to get reduced. I say random instead of ice blades because that's what this does. 50% chance that the cooldown reduction is applied to another skill. So if you've got a load of ice blades up hitting a vulnerable target, they're going to power down the cooldown of your ultimate deep freeze that we're choosing here really fast, and you can cast it much more often than every 58 seconds though I will not get ahead of myself. We of course then have maximum ranks in Hydra, it is just too strong and you always want it up, it will just shred through bosses, through enemies, through waves, everything. We grab the enhanced to gain a fourth when we're healthy, so that's just nice, 25% increase on it, and then we want invoked so that when we do crit, our Hydras gain 30% more crit chance and start doing even more ridiculous amounts of damage, and it all just beautifully synergizes to get there. Then we have our ultimate as Deep Freeze, 4 seconds of invulnerability, gives you a breather, and then more importantly, completely freezes and does massive damage to everything around you. But another important component to Deep Freeze is it has a big cooldown. Technically, Inferno is massive damage and is the generically best choice, but we want that extra 20 second cooldown for two reasons. It's getting reduced anyway thanks to the Ice Blade synergy, but our chosen... Uh, passive enchantment of choice is Ice Blades, which means for every 20 seconds in cooldowns we spend, we spawn an extra Ice Blade. 
That is so good. That means that when we press Deep Freeze, we summon three whole free Ice Blades on top of three enemies. And if the only enemy is a boss, well then now that boss has got three extra Ice Blades all attacking him, making him constantly vulnerable. You've got a fourth Ice Blade from actually casting it. Then you've put Ice Armor on, which has triggered this again. So now you've got five Ice Blades all hitting the boss, all making it constantly vulnerable, all hitting a vulnerable enemy, reducing your cooldowns by five seconds every time they switch swing and you see how this just consistently feedback loops while you're critting with lightning making your damage ramp with hydra and then resetting the cooldown of ice armor from the crits which lets you press it again to make you unkillable but also it now summons another ice blade thanks to the passive and breathe it really does feed into itself and every element of this is so neatly and tightly packaged together to just run as a powerful build engine that excels at both destroying groups of enemies and absolutely melts through big single target boss health bars it really is awesome fun to play and the thing is because you've got a hydra and loads of ice blades up when you sit in your deep freeze the enemies are just dying because they've got so much killing them on top of the deep freeze damage itself that it just feels unfair. So that is generally the way to go. Head into a fight, put your ice blade down, put your ice armor up, put your hydra up, go into deep freeze, all your cooldowns will come back, keep spamming them out, have an army of ice blades, constant hydra, chain lightning with every bit of spare 35 mana, do your sparks when you've got nothing else to do, get that crit, which will reset ice armor, and just constantly looping through, spawning endless ice blades that endlessly reset your cooldowns, that endlessly let you spawn more, and it just doesn't stop and it's brilliant all right then in terms of legendaries as a quick little note what we care about is uh, the ones that increase your crit chance for obvious reasons we care about more damage in barriers because we're in barriers constantly the extra hydra is fantastic as hydra is our main source of damage and a 23 percent less chance of it being up is definitely worth having just an extra whole one and past that just anything that's generically good or helps a specific move that we are using in the build here. I hope then this has given you a kind of strong direction and an example of just how powerful the sorcerer can be and I hope you very much enjoy testing it out in this upcoming open for everyone beta weekend and indeed as we move towards the full game proper. For now then, thank you very much for listening, like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more, consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below and until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.